focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to this special presentation titled Control Your Digital Destiny presented by Live Mint and Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And it's an important topic considering digital transformation is growing in relevance across business. And to share their insights on the topic we have with us, some leading voices from industry. Let me quickly introduce you to them. Rajesh Upal joins us from Maruti. We have Som Satsangi from uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Neil Ratan from PricewaterhouseCoopers. Gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for joining us. It's, a, it's an interesting topic, controlling your digital destiny, though not easy. So I'll start with you, Mr. Opal. Why is it important for us to, for a company to control its digital destiny and take charge of that digital journey? Today, digital is becoming a differentiator across the organizations, frankly. So hmm. if you are, it creates that efficiency in the system, it creates that differentiation in the organization with respect to your competition. That's point number one. Number two, all the stakeholders of the company, whether it's your employees, your customers and all, today they are so much exposed to digital that expectations are that each organization has to be digital to converse with them, interact with them. Hmm. And that's where the whole control on your uh, digital journey comes and where you have to drive in your business, frankly. All right. And Mr. Satsangi, from a provider perspective, how would you answer that question? So, uh, Gautam, let me answer this slightly differently. See, digital disruption we are seeing uh, is coming and disrupting almost every industry. We have seen this digital has brought on a lot of new business model like Amazon, Ola, Uber, uh, Airbnb, all these things, new business model was not existed earlier, but suddenly they have come and they have disrupted their respective industry. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we have also seen some of the organization who has not adopted this thing, the change, and Kodak is one of the best example. They could not see digital coming on their way, continue the way uh, legacy they have been working, mm -hmm. and they got vanished from the marketplace. So from uh, HPE standpoint, we believe that every organization needs to start thinking that what are their digital journey and how they can embark to be ahead of the curve from as compared to their competitive. Hmm. Otherwise, they are going to vanish from this market. Kodak is a good example. Mr. Ratan, from a bird's eye view perspective of all the businesses, all the sectors that you see, do you think kind of time is running out for a lot of businesses to start on this digital transformation journey? Maybe that's why it's so essential for them to control their digital destiny. No, absolutely, absolutely. I think the issue today is not whether I need to uh, kind of change myself and adopt digital better. Mm. But uh, how fast I do it, how well I do it, that's, I think, what is going to uh, determine the destiny of the company. Mm. So in a way, if I was to paraphrase, digital destiny is probably one of the most important factors which is defining the destiny of a company today. Mm. I think the issue really then is that how do you, uh, what do you need to do to control that, if I move in that uh, direction a bit, uh, how do you look at customers mm. in the center? Uh, one of the things organizations are very good at, especially large ones, they all look at their silos and departments and products and portfolios, etc. And some may forget the customer. If you keep the customer in the front and see what does he want, how is his life going to change, hmm. and then think ahead. Focus uh, on that question and bring all the elements absolutely. around towards answering that. That's the point absolutely. of view. Absolutely. What are the core elements of a digital enterprise? What would you categorize as the core elements, Mr. Opal? Okay, if you look at it from a technology lens and the way you want to drive this kind of uh, transformation would be, I put it into three different buckets of, of technologies or the three way of doing that and all. Hmm. First and foremost, obviously you have to make a business case, customer center and put all the technologies together and do that. But I think first area is basically how do you, how do you really acquire the information or data right from each endpoint of inter interaction, whether it's your mobile phone, whether you are you are the thing. So ensure that you capture right data of digital into your whole ecosystem is one, which includes you know the the external service provider, internal uh, altogether. Second, very clearly, is when you get all those information from the from the system, how do you manage that information? And today the volume of that information is 
tremendous thing. Mm -hmm. One interaction or one car may be sending you a terabytes of data to be there. So how do we manage all those data? Around? And third element of the, of the whole journey would be how to consume this data to take right decision. Some decision could be real time. Some of those decisions could be on, on, on a trending basis. How do we do that? So all the three components of acquiring, managing, and consuming that will be the three element of the of the digital uh, okay. process. Okay. And in terms of strategic priorities, what's your what's your follow up on on what Mr. Rupal has said, Mr. Satsang? Digital for every organization to organization and sector to sector also vary. What is probably applicable for let's say automobile company like Maruti may not be very relevant hmm. to a, a, a services or a, a company like PwC. So the way we look at it from the HPE standpoint that any digital journey for any organization has got three core pillar in the whole thing. First, as Neil earlier mentioned, that uh, customer focus kind of thing. So the moment you start thinking about your customer, the digital enterprises focus that how they are going to retain their customer, do cross sell, upsells, and all of those things. Mm. Second, when digital journey customers are looking at how the digital journey is going to embark for most optimizations on their cost saving, on uh, business outcome, and go to market and route to market and how fast they can deliver the new product and services, saving the cost. And third, obviously all these digital things, how they can bring the new services model, new business model. And it's also somewhere that we are at that point of the technological curve where we can tailor a lot of these solutions specific to a business, specific to a sector, focused on answering that big question, how can we provide better services to our customer? Uh, Mr. Ratham, what would you say about the core elements that are involved uh, here? Absolutely. I see, let me start with the bad news. 70% of digital transformations fail. Okay. Why do you say that? That's the recent study we did. And what are the reasons and why does that happen? That if we use that uh, uh, mechanics to get to what are the key uh, components. Uh, first is if we, uh, kind of if the vision for digital is not a corporate vision. Huh. Either you let the CIO alone to drive, or you let one group to drive. Hmm. So, so somewhere it ought to be either, either company or CEO's vision executed by the organization. So the whole of the organization needs, needs to get together and do that. That's one important uh, one. Second is the business model, which kind of um, Som just touched upon, hmm. are you just looking at doing everything that you were doing earlier on your own? Hmm. Or are you willing to go with an ecosystem approach? Are you willing to look at kind of the world in a very different way hmm. and, and move as an ecosystem, completely transforming the way you've kind of worked in the past and then trying to move ahead? All and right. the third is the internal part as well, which is often forgotten, that how do you keep the internal processes at pace hmm. to deal with the external digital revolution that you're trying to do. So how are you automating your internal process in a way that they don't come in as stumbling blocks? Hmm. How are you automating those? How are you kind of freeing up the time of your internal employees from all the mundane activities they've been doing to a more focused, outcome-centric, hmm. uh, and a customer-friendly activity? What about the government sector, this massive overhaul that would be necessary, not just in terms of structures, but it's also in terms of thinking. How do you think digital transformation is going to take place in the government sector? Then? The challenge there is that uh, the expectations of the citizens keep changing. Okay. So from yesterday to today, uh, and I have a very classic example for that, say the income tax department. So until uh, five years ago, if your refund uh, for a return being filed did not come four, five years later, hmm. you would start complaining. Today you start complaining after four months maybe. Mm. And if all goes well, in a few years we'll start complaining in a few days. Mm. So the, the expectation changes, which is good, uh, and uh, the, the response changes accordingly. The mm. other big uh, uh, kind of trend we see, the citizens are, have stopped to differentiate between a private service and a government service. That line for the citizen has started to blur. You play a property tax also. They like. expect a smooth service. They expect whether it's the a private... same level of service mm. at both ends. Mm. And so, for the private sector, that, that also presents challenges, right? Because 
in terms of delivering to customer expectations which keep increasing all the time where as he mentioned that you know you want the speed the delivery the insight that you present to your customers how do how does maruti leverage technology to service its customers better i mean you have ai you have machine learning how does bring it all together to explain to us how you know maruti works to service its customers better okay i think uh, one very clearly is is it's not a it journey is is the organization journey which we hmm. have been embarking upon and if i talk about domains of area which we have been working on very clearly and on one very clearly is the customer domain now we have a huge distribution channel more than 4500 location where sell our service our cars how do we ensure that each interaction at that point is very clearly customized to that that customer and and work with that and all empowered by a digital journey and all and this mm. is something which i have been doing for a couple of years now and and going forward second important area for a industry like ours would be a industry or a manufacturing per se and all mm. how do you ensure and today all our factories are with all robotics and all those high end uh, machines over there and all how do we connect with each one of them and how do we ensure that we optimally improve our efficiency in the shop floor Hmm. to really make sure that we are we are uh, most okay. efficient to deliver uh, value to our customers third important element is the product for itself and for us you know you know car is going to be connected going forward and make sure that we uh, get all the information from them and use that information for best use of the uh, for the customer and all both consuming that data and also maybe while designing those cars and all use technology to ensure that we right create a right product for the right customers and all Okay. and last important part is our internal stakeholders our employees hmm. how do you make them digital and give them experience similar to what he expect from empower their work empower space, work to, space so to is say. something working on all right we've got lots of points shared but we've got lots more points to discuss we'll take a short break on that note uh, but stay tuned to cnbc tv 18 lots more coming up <laughs> Welcome back to the special presentation titled Control Your Digital Destiny presented by Live Mint and Hewlett Packard Enterprises. Now before going to the break Mr. Ruppal was explaining to us how Maruti leverages technology to service its customers better. Uh, as a provider Mr. Satsangi tell us about how HPE helps its customers in their digital transformation journey. HPE working very closely with all large enterprises government public sector to drive their digital journey and put it onto a uh, fast track kind of thing and we at hpe believe that there are three core pillar of any digital transformation journey which hpe is helping its customer first how we can make hybrid it simple for their organizations mm. because one of the biggest challenges for enterprises what workload to keep in their data center what put on the cloud how to mitigate the risk kind of thing so hp provide a flexible model to bring these things from data center to edge a seamless integration through our uh, software defined infrastructure onto the data center that's first core pillar second we know that uh, as per the prediction in next two year the amount of data will be generated in the edge mm. will be the almost similar to what it has been generated for last 20 years plus kind of thing mm. so we feel edge is going to be very very critical and we are going to be power the intelligent edge there we bring lot of solutions so that we can control the entire interface from customer starting from edge to cloud to their data center mm. and third obviously through our hp point next services we require professional and advisory services because somebody require a seamless integration from edge to cloud to data center so we provide the seamless integration through our point next services to provide a holistic experience in the customer experience in okay. their digital and journey. how many of these elements are you incorporating in in terms of your work with the government almost all three of them are incorporated in in this uh, smart city and i'll give you one simple example recently we picked up one of the largest uh, uh, smart city initiative project from mp government mm. and where it is we are going to be implementing for the first time cloud based integrated command and control center which is going to covering seven city in madhya pradesh and the way we are trying to create the integrated command and control center is going to provide all the citizen centric services mm. in these seven cities whole lot of other services including how we can provide the safety and control to the common citizen so initially you talk about the digital journey is mm. also when you look from the government and public sector standpoint how we can provide the safe city to our citizen 
and provide that thing. So that is what journey we are trying to do in this MP Smart City project. Okay, citizen-centric services, that's the keyword I'm looking at you to answer in terms of how optimistic are you about the government leveraging technology to provide these citizen-centric services. It's, it's not as easy as it sounds. As you mentioned, expectations are blurring, so the challenge is going to be more severe for the government. See, the government playing two roles. Hmm. One is as a uh, as an ecosystem builder and an infrastructure provider role hmm. so that the quality of citizen service can enhance significantly. And the second, as a provider of service, of citizen services directly itself. And let me take both in two parts. The first one, the examples for infrastructure uh, or the ecosystem building would be an Aadhaar or a GSTN. So both these platform initiatives are in a way helping the country transform hmm. beyond the boundaries of the uh, entity with the government created itself. Part two in terms of what kind of initiatives the government is taking in. Let, let's, let's say look at the UPI or the entire digital payment uh, industry, the way it's mm. kind of mushroomed and grown uh, significantly after the um, uh, demonetization and the effort continues. But it's also about, you know, having a sort of a hybrid IT approach because when we're talking about, say, cloud computing, the in merging your private cloud with the public cloud becomes a necessity to, to provide a lot of the services, of course, not just for the government, more importantly for the private sector. So, Mr. Opal, how do you see organizations, you know, tapping the power of combining, uh, you know, the, a hybrid IT approach to deliver on, all, on, on a lot of the expectations that the organization itself would have and the customers that would have it. There are two different kind of computing requirements we have in all. One is very, very solid, consistent. Other one is agile, quickly to be provisioned, quickly to be grossed. If, if it's a uh, high, you know, say, say, uh, high festival season around, you can increase your in infrastructure, do that. Hmm. But end of the day, you have to manage both. Hmm. So you need an infrastructure which, which makes sure that in back end these are being managed. But, but but the technology which you can manage both the things together. And I want you to expand on how, you know, how will pay-per-use consumption models drive forward accelerated outcomes? When we look at seasonal demands, companies, sectors which look at seasonal demands, how do you see that moving forward? See, I think hmm. pay-per-use is a very fantastic model for trying new initiatives hmm. to make sure that you, uh, you try it out, use that out and all and then uh, consume that as, as and when required. Let okay. me add a point to that. I think the paper use, when you look at it from a government standpoint, I, I think the, uh, the definition of paper use in a large number of transactions is, or large number of programs of the government is very different. Say, for instance, how, how does a passport program, or how does an income tax program, how does a GEM program, which I just spoke about, get paid for? Hmm. These are not lump sum payments which is coming in. Hmm. They are for every su successful passport printed, for every... Uh, uh, successful uh, transaction completed, every transfer successful purchase made. So it's the outcome based uh, pricing on mm. a transaction model is there to stay now. And I think for any provider or the MSP as it comes in, mm. for him to manage those uh, where the volumes may not be very uh, kind of uh, clear or firm in, in that sense, having an agile infrastructure uh, which is as well paper use mm. will always be that uh, could be its key selling point for a that, lot of that companies. can always be a value addition there are some uh, additional uh, considerations from a government standpoint which come in from a cloud uh, standpoint from a pure cloud standpoint in terms of uh, whether it is all in-house in the country, whether mm. it is outside, what type of data uh, to today consider a health record. Mm. Uh, to, You'll to have to on. develop standards around it. It's not as, also, as it there are cert, right. some sets of data which are far more sensitive. Okay. Uh, far more sensitive from you a government standpoint. You have to take care of additional layers as well. Yeah. The security is a critical security, part. Security, of course, is, is a very critical. critical part on this. For government, beyond security, the perception is very important as well. You, you cannot have to say play the game to make sure that You cannot say that the health record of the of the, of entire India, hmm. it may be the safest place, but it cannot be out there. India. How does HPE help a company in its digital transformation journey using these solutions? Yeah. Mr. Opal talks about the flexibility of consumption, that how during the workload can be go up and go down based on the seasonal loads kind of thing. So we were also the first one to launch the full fully composable infrastructure called Synergy, hmm. and which provides on-prem, all cloud-based functionality, feature, agility, and also the economy, what you can provide in the public cloud kind of thing. So that's a true hybrid model. And Neil talk about the security. So today you get the security on-prem 
and functionality and pricing of cloud kind of thing. And that is what organizations are looking. Not only the enterprises, even government public sectors are looking. So synergy is a one uh, uh, big success story for yeah. us. From HP GreenLake uh, uh, offering, HP from Point Next Services, we started the GreenLake offering. Mm. GreenLake is nothing but it's an outcome-based, consumption-based services. So mm. on-prem, we provide mm. you all the functionality and feature, whether you wanted to do a backup, you wanted to take database as a services, or you mm. wanted to roll out any services, intelligent edges as services, we will provide based on the consumption based kind of thing. So whatever you consume, what you need you is what you this. get. That's, that's what right. that's the point here. That's All right. right. All right, on that note, we'll conclude this conversation. I'd like to thank our panelists for coming and sharing their insights on the topic of controlling your digital destiny. I'm sure our viewers have learned a lot on the topic from all you three. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for watching this special presentation.